name is Abutu Elijah from the Department of Vocational and Technical Education, Benue State University. I'm on an assignment to carry out a project work on a half bridge rectifier. And before I get to tell us the components we have, I have to put down the diagram so we can see how it looks like. Now the diagram you are having here is a diagram of a half wave of a half wave rectifier circuit circuit. Now this circuit actually it comes in the power section of electronic units. You use this circuit for regulating the power that comes into an electronic unit. So it basically does the function of, especially with the introduction of the diode, it does the function of converting the AC, which is your alternating current, your source of power neighbor, to a DC, so that it doesn't get to affect the circuit on whatever you have to do. So having put down the diagram, now we have just very few components here on this design. Now the components are right here with us which are the transformer, the capacitor, and then the diode. Where's the capacitor? Capacitor, the diode, and the transformer. These are the components. And then this is the barrel board which, on which these components are going to be mounted. Then you have our meter. Of course, you know, as usual, for you to do any, carry out any design, any construction that relates to electricity, you have to have your meter. So you'll be sure that whatever you're doing is accurate. Now with this, we can be certain if whatever we do is accurate or not. Now having said this so far, we'll go straight into carrying out what we expected to do now. The first point here, the, the transformer basically has two, it has two points. It has the input and then the output. Now the output, as you can see, the input, as you can see, is where the source of electricity comes through. And that is, as you can see, there's a difference between the size of the cables. The input has larger cable size, and then the output has smaller cable size. Now this is because this is where the main source of electricity comes through. This, you see here, is just what comes out of here is the induced electricity that comes out as a result of the process that is carried out within the transformer winding. Okay, now we shall begin our mounting here. This is our very board on which we do our mounting. The first thing here is to connect the output of our transformer winding, which is what you are seeing here in blue. As you fix your soda, and make sure it is firm. Good. And you fix the other point. Now the next thing we have, as we can see from the diagram, is we have our diode, which is linked up to the secondary winding of the transformer, which is the part in blue. So we have to do our connection from this point. 
and ensure to note the position of your connection because the diode flows only current in the diode flows only in one direction. It's in a, it's a in a directional component. So if it is strongly placed, there will be a problem. The current won't flow and it will hinder the purpose for which the circuit is designed. next terminal Now the next thing we have to do here is to link up with our capacitor. We connect our capacitor to our diode here. And ensure that the capacitor is placed in the right direction because even on it, this, it the, the capacitor we are using is an electrolytic capacitor. It's polarized. It has negative and positive. The positive end of the capacitor should be connected to the positive of the diode. This is to ensure that there is proper functionality in the circuit. expect to do is since this is not a design board it's not a board that is specially designed for this purpose it is designed to be worked upon so we have to ensure that the points that need to be cut off so as not to create unnecessary linkage of electricity we have to do that so we have to cut the link between the two ends of the diode which is the positive and negative terminal by breaking the board the terminal of the board from this far the next point here is to get the link of our output. This is this output is where whatever circuit you have to connect to. Like I said earlier, it is the power section of the circuit. So what whatever circuit you have to connect to, this is where from this point now it goes into that circuit.
very careful so you don't get to interchange or fix components wrongly because whatever you do here will affect the end point of your work it is either you destroy it or it gives you a wrong output at the end of the day so you have to be very careful about that now you cut out this you cut off this projection so it doesn't affect the function that we have gotten all we need here so the next thing we have to do is to get our link where we we'll actually have to connect to the power source now this is our power cord here on which we plug to our source of electricity and like I said from the onset this is the input of it where the source of electricity comes in so our power cord will be connected to this end I will just build up the, the tip of the cable there so it can make way for us to do our firm tightening We use the insulator, the rubber insulator on it, and then seal it up. So, this is a complete and a typical of a half wave rectifier circuit. Now, everything now proves that it's okay. For us to be very sure, let's test it with our source of supply. Now you connect it to your source of supply and then your end point here, which is your output now you can see as you get to touch the terminals of the output you see that it's simply proving that the current from the start point is flowing as far as to this point that's to tell you that the circuit is around so once it is connected to where it's supposed to be you have exactly what you are supposed to have because if you perform its function properly, everything will just be So viewers, this is just a simple demonstration of what I have been saying earlier on, the halfway rectifier circuit. And I believe it will not be a difficult process for any of you to get to design this if you want to do it next time. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.